everyone, I'm Ari Meglin here with Rachel Poley and we're your hosts for the Merry Writer Podcast. We are on episode 111 and this week's question is, should you let family and friends read your manuscript? Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening so you never miss a show. And if you enjoy our episode, please give it a like, write a review, share it with friends. Okay, so should you let your family and friends read your manuscript? My personal thoughts, no. I'm always saying that at the moment. I feel like every episode is me saying, no, don't do that. We both have. <laughs> Let's, what other controversial topics can we talk about? <laughs> I think the, the, the issue comes in that if you, if you write a story, people want, want to share it. They want to let other people read it and they want the support, especially in a creative endeavor. Creatives don't often get support the same way other people do in other types of industries or even hobbies. So I can understand that. However, I personally don't see the point in family and friends reading your work if they are not your audience. There are a couple of people in my family who do read and they do read the sort of thing I write. They would be people I would want to read it because they understand what I'm writing. They would be good people for critiquing. And if they really wanted to, they could be great cheerleaders. I don't see the point in giving my work to family members or friends who do not read this sort of thing. I have family and friends who don't read at all, aren't very big readers. And if obviously I pass them my manuscript, they might very generously give their time to read it. But what would be the point? But they could be a cheerleader. They could be like, yeah, great. You did that. I'm so proud. But honestly, they could say that without reading it. I don't see the point in pushing work on someone who isn't going to be your target audience who isn't someone who can help in any way now obviously the caveat because let's be honest I love my caveats if your family member or friend is brilliant at grammar you know if they're like some English teacher or something like that who's got a really good grasp of grammar and they can look at it for that fine that's okay but if it's literally just because they're related to you and they're your friends mm, now the other caveat of that is if they ask to read it, that's a different matter. However, I would still be unsure about that too, because I mean, I've had that with other parts of my life where I've said like, oh yes, I, I have a business, I have a shop. And people are like, oh great, send it me. And it's like, why? <laughs> I know for a fact, you're not my target buyer. There's no point in me sending you to the shop because you aren't interested. And I know you won't buy anything from the shop and you could say well they could pass the link on to somebody else same with the book they could talk it up to somebody else but it's not I don't know I don't I don't find it that useful so my automatic answer would be it shouldn't automatically go to friends and family unless they really really want to read it they have some connection to it so like they're your target audience or they just enjoy reading in general and because you know maybe if it's not exactly that sort of book something a little bit different they might want to or if they can help you in any way if it's just for cheerleading or support they'll probably give you that anyway just for the fact that you finished it so yeah I just it's, it's just a waste of time I personally think it's probably a controversial thought but I'm going with it well you're gonna hate me because I think I'm gonna end up playing devil's advocate for a moment and I have to admit I think my overall answer would be it depends, which is kind of a stupid answer. And I apologize for not giving you guys a straight answer, but I think it depends on your family. My sister will read my work. She doesn't write mysteries like I do. She's tried it a couple of times, but like that's not her main genre, but she too is a writer. And even though she doesn't mainly write mysteries, like she still has some valuable, she still has some valuable insight onto anything pertaining to the book, plot, characters, whatever. Uh, my parents, on the other hand, they are not writers. Uh, my, my dad doesn't usually ask to read my stuff. Like he's just like, yay, you did a thing. And like, that's kind of it. And that's totally fine. Whereas my mom will ask to read and every once in a while she will read it. And like, I already know that I'm not gonna necessarily get any major critique from it, but I think it's good practice. Even if you're not giving it to someone to critique, I think it's good practice to have other people read your work so you get comfortable with sharing your work. Um, it's, I think it's easier to like publish your story and then have strangers read it 
because at, at, on the one hand, you're like, well, you're a stranger. I don't really care what you think. You can't hurt my feelings because I don't know you in real life, even though, you know, those one star reviews can sting a little. But I think giving it out to people that you know and allowing them to read, even if it's sample chapters or something, I think that can help build your thick skin a lot. Uh, what I'm going to play devil's advocate about, though, is that you were saying that you should have people read and critique your work if they're the target audience. And I do agree with that to a certain extent. And the reason I say that is because I write cozy mysteries. What I want my book to do is if it ever gets makes it to like an actual shelf in like a real bookstore, I want people to go to that section and be like, I've never read mystery before. I want to give one a try. Let me see. And I want to bring people into the genre. And I want people to say, I started reading murder mysteries because of Rachel. And this author is fabulous. And her, you know, just all that. Like, I want to be like, you want to be that author that like brings people into the genre. And if they like your work, then great. They'll be there for whenever you publish your next book. Because, and the part of the reason I say this too is because I brought my manuscript to vacation with me one time. And I thought to myself that in my downtime, I would try to edit it a little bit. And this was probably like, I don't know, four, four or five years ago. It was a while ago. And my cousin, who is now 17, so you think minus four or five years, whatever that math is, she came into my room on vacation and and saw my manuscript sitting on the on my bed because I took it out with the intention of editing it. And then I was like, ew. And I just, I just put it at the foot of my bed. And she picked it up and she was like, oh, how come you brought this? And I told her I was thinking of editing it. And she was like, oh, well, can I, can I edit it for you? And I was just like, okay, sure. Like have at it. And she only got through like five pages before she got distracted by something else. But I looked at it later on that night and she actually made some really good points within those first couple of pages. And I was like, huh, okay. And this is coming from someone who doesn't read or at the time she didn't really read. Uh, she's been reading more now, but at the time she wasn't a huge reader. Like she was kind of anti books. Uh, so I think there are definitely pros and cons to having family members or close friends read it you can build that thick skin or you can bring somebody into the genre yeah I I think even if it doesn't necessarily help I think it does help in some way that's it maybe she started reading more because she got inspired by what she read no that would uh <laughs> be an author named Kiara Cass from uh she writes the selection series <laughs> oh she right. found those on my shelves fairly recently <laughs> and she and she like whipped through the books like crazy <laughs> <laughs> oh you, you're right though I will I will concede a little bit <laughs> but, uh, I don't give ground very often but I will concede a bit yes that it doesn't always have to be your target audience if someone isn't interested you know interested in reading or the look of having someone who wasn't interested in reading and still felt compelled to to read it and give some notes that can be quite good I think where I stand is more that if the instant that you finish it's like oh well family and friends definitely rather than thinking more about it I mean I've seen other writers where they've said like well my parents have read it I mean my mom and dad aren't really big readers and when they are they read like you know autobiographies so it was totally out of their wheelhouse and they didn't really say anything and made me feel a bit uncomfortable and it's like that's that's the sort of thing it's like why put yourself through that not you know not whether they're saying good things or bad things but just that kind of like almost indifference because it would be the same thing if someone said oh would you read this sports article for me it's like oh okay whatever what water polo who you know <laughs> it's hard to feel interested about that and, and depending on the sort of family and friends you have they might not show any enthusiasm because that can happen <laughs> it can happen yeah you, you're absolutely right and I do want to say I'm not 100% disagreeing with you. I, I do think like you can obviously share it with your friends and family if you so choose. If you are going to share your book with somebody like for the purposes of critique and trying to like improve upon your story, then yeah, I, I agree. Family and friends aren't the one to do that unless they themselves are writers and possibly write in your genre or are part of the target audience, as Ari said. I think another thing to to think about 
if you are giving it to family and friends who aren't either big readers or or big into that genre or anything like that what can happen and I do know this has happened because it's happened to me is you can end up passing it over for them to read and not hearing back and not hearing back and then you you end up feeling like a bit of a creep constantly going have you finished it yet did you like it have you read it yet and they're coming up with more and more elaborate excuses as to why they haven't or why they haven't finished it yet and you know for a fact it's still unopened and it does make you feel a bit crap personally what I think is if you're a writer you need to get out and start making writer friends and reader friends and obviously that is where social media and websites and everything can really help because they are a really good tribe family of people who can help you who are interested even if it's not something that they would normally read I have a few writer friends who write genres that are not wouldn't be my my, my top ones to go to but I am still really interested in reading their work And, and vice versa they want to read my work I would go there first rather than go to family just because I don't want to take up my family's time for something I know they're not going to bother about not going to be that interested in I don't want the fake praise (laughs) I've had it and I don't like it that kind of well of course we like anything you do Uh, no I I don't like that it feels disingenuous (laughs) I also don't want the where, where someone who isn't interested in that story then absolutely turns it apart and that can happen if if you're not interested in that sort of if that sort of story and you read it I mean we've all seen it we've all seen the one stars from someone and the way they've written their review it's like obviously that wasn't a book for you so well I picked it up didn't realize it was a romance hate romance one star because it was full of romance and it's like well then why did you read it just put it back (laughs) you know don't finish it if you don't like romance and then you read it and it's got romance and then you complain because it has romance that's the kind of thing seems so pointless Meanwhile, it's the number one bestseller on Amazon (laughs) in the romance category. And they're like, I didn't know there was love. How dare this author do this to me? It's like, there's romance in the freaking title. (laughs) How did you not get that? (laughs) Did you see the book cover? (laughs) Let me guess. Shirtless guy. Yep. (laughs) Wording woman. There you go. Yeah. I didn't realize. But it's that, you know. And also, I'm going to be really annoying. I've seen the other side where I've seen reviews from people who were obviously family and friends who gush in almost a cringy way. You know, it's like, oh, this is my niece's book. And oh, my God, look how great she is. And oh, she's so smart. And you're just like, oh, wow. I would not want to see that on my on my book. I would rather get, you know, loads of three star reviews than have one five star review that's that cringy, (laughs) if I'm honest. I don't like that. No, I, I totally agree with you on that one because I've seen those reviews too. And yeah, it is. Cringy is a good word for it. And it's, ugh, yeah, it's just like these. And and you know what? That kind of goes back to our whole point about, you know, whether or not you should have family and friends read your book. Because obviously if it's already published, then yeah, they're free to read it whatever, like if they so choose and stuff. But to ask them to read it and then write a review when it's published Unless they're going to be like totally honest. And even if they give you a one-star review because they were like, wow, my kid's a terrible writer, but I'm the mom. So here I am being supportive. Even if it's a review like that, like, yeah, fine. At least it's an honest review. Don't do that though. (laughs) No, it's really weird. And I appreciate this is a lot of this and, and, you know, we're giving our personal opinions because, you know, that's what we do. Yeah. That's the whole point of the podcast, people. Hopefully you realize that by now. (laughs) But I personally, I don't like it when I see a book out with instant reviews that are obviously very close family and friends, you know, because it's either said within, you know, it's like, oh, this is my best friend's book. And it's like, first of all, if I read a book written by my best friend, I wouldn't feel the need to announce that. I would just review it as another writer slash reader person, how I would read it, you know, honestly. But the idea of actually putting in, oh, this is my best friend's book. This is my niece's book. This is my daughter's book. It's like, (laughs) that is awful. And I I will side eye a book that I see that on. So if there's several reviews that are clearly from friends and family, all five stars, because aren't they always, I will side eye that book and it will not go on my list unless I hear from other people that I trust that it's okay. 
I do think it can have that sort of a negative thing. But again, that's just me. I, I'm that picky. No, but I'm the same way though. You can you can easily tell pick apart those reviews and stuff, and I and I totally get that because I mean I'm not one to look at reviews before I buy a book anyway. Um, sometimes I'll I'll look at the average, and depending on where that average is, I might scroll down to the reviews and just see what people are saying. Uh, because sometimes if if the rating is really low, sometimes it's because of like spelling errors and grammatical errors and things like that. Too many typos, that kind of thing I want to know about before I buy the book because if it's going to be too jarring to read because it's not written well then I don't want it forget it but for the most part I don't really look at the reviews um before I buy <laughs> but yeah there are times like we're all on Instagram we're all on Twitter and things like that I'm a book reviewer I follow other book reviewers so I do see book reviews around and I have gotten recommendate like book rec recommendations from book bloggers that I follow because I noticed that they rated it four stars or five stars or something. So if you see those kinds of reviews, then obviously those ones are legit because chances are, unless they're family members or a fellow like book blogger or they're a fellow writer, those reviews are kind of legit. So if I do look at reviews before I decide to buy a book, I don't go straight to Amazon and I don't even sometimes go straight to Goodreads. I'll try to find book reviews elsewhere, like on a book blogger's website or on their Instagram. That's a good point. I think one of the reasons um, some people let their family and friends read their book, not their manuscript, the completed book, is so they can get those early reviews, isn't it? Because obviously the more reviews you get, especially at the very beginning, I think it's like the first week, if you get reviews on the first week of the book coming out, that's a, quite a good thing. I think it boosts the algorithm for Amazon or something like that. So I can understand this, that kind of like, oh, what if nobody reviews it? But really, if you're building up a really good network of writer friends and reader friends, if you have your street team, if you have beta readers, if you have people who, they can be in your corner, but you still want them to write honest reviews, always honest reviews. You should be able to convince a few of them to, to give a little bit of time, if they've read the book, to put in a review on. If you feel that you have to pad up your reviews by having friends and family instantly go on and start writing eerily gushy cringy reviews just to get reviews no as Rachel said there's book bloggers out there that you can reach out to there's um you can use a publicist who will do it for you you can do blog hops you can find them on social media you can put them on a Facebook page and just be like hey does anyone want to review this book here is the blurb is it something you'd be interested in blah 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 so there are ways of doing it. If you've published your book and you're just waiting and you've done very little marketing to push anyone doing reviews, you know, either before the book launch or after the book launch, and then you're thinking, oh, I've no reviews. I'll get friends and family to do it. No, bad writer, bad writer. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> this should be part of your marketing plan. The funny thing is, I think I could be wrong. Maybe it's changed, but I believe that in order for Amazon to like start giving your book attention, you need to have at least 50 reviews, or I think that's like a, like a decent benchmark or something like that. It makes me laugh because we're writers, like who knows 50 people? I don't. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of the other thing. Like, even if you did have your close family members write a five-star review and absolutely gush about the book, even if it's just like five or like even 10 family members and close friends who did that like it's not gonna really do you much good I think until that, you get like a good backlog of reviews isn't it as well Amazon very much wants you to be a verified purchaser I mean they'll yes. still let them be on but I think they they put more weight behind someone that obviously purchased it from them I have a love-hate relationship with that because obviously I think it's great that Amazon wants the purchase to be verified so that they know they actually did buy this book and that the author didn't pay for a review or anything like that. But on the other hand, I've gone on Amazon to review books that I got from the library or that I got from Barnes and Noble, and it doesn't come up as verified purchase because I didn't get it from Amazon. So it's kind of a flawed system in a way, because just because I didn't buy it from Amazon doesn't mean it's a fake review. But you do have to be careful about that because if um, if you give away your book for free to a book blogger or something or 
you have your book in a library and somebody just happens to pick it up in the library and they're giving a legit review. If it's like a three-star review, Amazon will be like, oh, well, the author definitely didn't pay for a three-star review and they'll most likely accept it like right away. But if it's a five-star review, even if it's a legit review, Amazon will be like, this is suspicious. <laughs> they didn't buy it from us. We need to wait an entire week to publish this review. And it's just annoying, the whole lot of it. <laughs> I find that funny because there was the flip side, like the reason that you can't review anonymously on Amazon was because of all the sock puppets that were created. Now a sock puppet is a fake account. And what was happening was authors were creating fake accounts to either leave positive reviews on themselves or what was happening was to go on to some competitors, especially ones in the same genre, and leave scathing reviews. And apparently it became such a big thing that Amazon took away the option of anonymous <laughs> reviews. So, so they sat there, you know, side eyeing the five star reviews. And yet there were people sock puppeting one star reviews everywhere that were fake because they hadn't even read the book. They were just trying to trash that author while boosting their own. So in the end, people suck. They do stupid, horrible things. That is where I'm going with that. And I just realized the, the 50 thing the 50 reviews i am i'm sure that if you get 50 reviews on a book amazon starts showing you the you know is it that the recommended you know like if you look at a book and then go down there's like other things people like i think that's when you get on that if you get 50 yeah reviews, I think. yeah like once you have 50 reviews amazon is like oh wow people actually like this book or people are noticing this book i should say you could have 51 star reviews who knows and uh, then they'll start like actually not advertising it for you, but they will they will give it some attention. They will help you out just a little bit because Amazon's a real trooper. That's one word for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With that said, I don't think we have any other points about this. I'm sure you guys listening will will have points. Throw some comments at us. We do love to read them. I don't always respond straight away. I have like clusters of going on to YouTube and everything and, and responding to comments so I do apologize that as of recording this I know there's several comments that I haven't yet responded to but I do get I'm to this bad at comments sorry <laughs> that's okay <laughs> But yes, I, I, about them. <laughs> I will get to them. I don't mind. I don't mind doing it. I just have to remember to. I do it in clusters, and then I kind of fade out. I get a little overwhelmed with things, and I have to come back. And then sometimes I forget. So, but I am working on that. But anyway, people, let's turn it over to you guys. Do you let friends and family read your work? And if so, why? What does it help you? You know, what give us the benefits or the 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 cons? Even if if you know if you found out some. So bad things about letting friends and family read. We would love to chat about it. Put it in the comments below. If you want more of the Merry Writer podcast, be sure to follow us on Podbean, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. We are everywhere. We're actually on places that we didn't even realize. So yeah. And for as little as $1 a month, you can join us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the Merry Writer podcast for bonus content. It helps to keep our show going, and we really do appreciate the support. In the meantime, tune in every Wednesday for a new episode of the Mary Writer Podcast, where we ask all the right questions. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Shiny Objects. We are easily distracted. The music, titled Inspired, is by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0.